Hey guys, Jason Shellcross of the Fantasy Football Sacco is back at you with another episode. Today, Alex and I are going to be talking about wide receiver twos. Our wide receiver twos, what we think against each other. Uh, We're going to talk about some ESPN rankings, average draft position, all that good stuff. Stay with us. It's going to be fun. Let's go. Hey, Sacco's faithful. Don't forget to listen, like, and subscribe for more high quality Sacco's content and hit that bell. So, you know, the minute we drop some goodness on you, or as always visit our website, the fantasy football Sacco's.com for everything you need for this fantasy football season. Showtime. Welcome to the fantasy football Sacco's podcast with your hosts, Jason Shalcross and Alex Krogan. Let's go! All right, it's <laughs> it's Jason Shellcross and Alex Krog with some evidently some sh- shameless uh, self promotion going on at the start of this uh, YouTube video. Uh, Alex, how we doing, buddy? I like the uh, I like the t shirt. Hello oh, there! Wow! Yeah, uh, what yeah, is on I'm top of your right. head? Uh, my hair uh, is just, it's starting to get the flow a little bit of, of what it's like to be a little bit longer. It, you know, I think I mentioned this on like the first episode that the longest my hair has ever been was when I had a bowl cut when I was in high school or middle school. We are past Not that. high school. That's a bad, it's a bad look. Yeah, but yeah, we're, we're considerably past it. I'm, I'm ready to go. I've got the flow. And I, I feel like since we last talked, all I've been doing is ranking wide receivers and tight ends and my top 100 players. And you, you are just, you are just bashing me to, to get stuff done and, and get, get information to our people. Well, we have information ready for the people. Uh, I, I, before we get too hot and heavy into the deep stuff, uh, I do want to say that I feel like last, uh, or earlier this week's comparison to uh, a skinny Chris Kringle is no longer accurate. And we are, now, are you calling me fat? No. No, we're moving on from the holidays. You're now a, uh, a a redheaded Matthew McConaughey, I'd say, or like maybe Conan with a beard. I've always liked being compared to Conan, actually, uh, being six seven, and what I would like to think <laughs> is moderately gigantic. funny. Yeah. It's true, and and he's just a giant ginger, and we <laughs> we tend to stick together on things. <laughs> Just a giant ginger. He is hilarious. Um, all right. So before we get into these rankings, we do have one tidbit of news, and that is that we are officially the league, I should say, the NFL is officially going from four preseason games down to two preseason games with offseason activities to resume or to start as planned. So what impacts do you think, if any, axing two preseason games will have? Uh, hopefully there's less injuries. That's, I, I think that's the first thing to start out with. So you're not going to have, you know, if you do draft a little bit earlier this year because of COVID or whatever, because it might be more difficult to get people together or whatnot. So right. if you theoretically have pre- less preseason games, you're going to have less injuries. Although, because there's less preseason games, coaches might play their players more to get them more live reps before the season starts. I feel so bad theoretically, for all it's of the, like the UDFA struggling to make teams because there's not going to be a whole lot of time to shine in the preseason for those guys. Like you know, they usually have a full game or two. Yeah, it's true, and and we don't know what training camps are going to look like because they could be cutting down on people that are even allowed into camp. So, right. if you're not getting drafted, you almost have no shot of making a team this year. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's going to be rough. Uh, but from a fantasy football standpoint, it can make analysis a little more difficult, I guess. But at the same time, it's going to make it so the research you're doing now in July at this point. It might actually hold more true because you're not going to be swayed by uh, TJ Chark having, you know, six catches for 95 yards in a preseason game. And I, I don't think that was going to happen anyway. But 
the chances of it happening now are even less likely than they were before. And so if I think your analysis will hold more true and you'll kind of see players not fluctuate up and down because of not having those reps in the preseason. Yeah. The only, I think there's a couple downsides. One is it's going to give rookies the uh, less opportunity to establish themselves and take over a, a lead position a la Clyde Edwards Hilaire specifically is who I'm really thinking about here. Um, so hopefully Andy Reid is able to recognize that talent. I mean, I think he already has recognized it, but hopefully, I don't know. Hopefully he's still comfortable. I just, I feel like he's still going to get the job. And I've said this, you know, over and over and over again, it just might take a little bit longer now with two less preseason games. Um, and then the other thing is with less practice and less games, and then you go straight into the real thing. I think we might see some more soft tissue type injuries at the beginning of the season, pulled hammies and things like that, because guys, I mean, we're, everybody already complains about the lack of practice from an injury standpoint, potentially hurting players or causing soft tissue injuries at the beginning of the year, given how much they've cut down on practices and contact practices, um, especially in the last decade. And so now you cut out a couple games and who knows what else they're cutting out. I'm sure team scrimmages in the off season, like leading up to those games, I doubt those will happen too. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if anybody gets hurt or if more people get hurt uh, with the less games. And, yeah. I mean, not, not that many people play in the preseason anyway. So right. ultimately it shouldn't be making that big of a difference. It's just a thing. Honestly, I I'm glad that they're getting rid of them. I hope that, that, that it stays a permanent change personally. Right. And preseason then they can games just are add worthless. two more real, uh, you know, regular season games and bam, bada boom, bada bing. That's a lot of football and I'm all weeks. for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just two, maybe, maybe two, two bye weeks, a 17 game season. And that, that way you keep the players a little more fresh or for, for all the women listening out there, what the NFL really should do is they should have like a week eight in the season where every team is on a bye. And that way you can, <laughs> like actually get the husbands away from the television on a Sunday afternoon and, and have them do something. And that way, can so you, it, like, can you imagine the like commercials the before? <laughs> I just go ahead. No, I, I think it would be great to just have, Hey, like you're not going to be able to watch football this weekend. You can do the, the chores around the house or something like that. I just imagine like commercials of like Lamar Jackson taking out the garbage and being like, Hey, I'll be back in a week. Don't worry. <laughs> 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 or like, that would like, be pretty funny. Yeah. Like Drew Brees changing a diaper. Be like, I didn't want this either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I'm all for that. Uh, and and it would theoretically make the competitive balance more reasonable because teams that come off a of bye week and then play somebody that hasn't had a bye yet and it's right. like week ten, it's like how how is this fair at all when it when a team's been sitting at home for a week and you have somebody coming off of like a Monday night game or something Ooh. like that and I I've never understood how how the buys get figured out and I always feel like teams that have like a buy in week four really get the shaft. Oh, they do. And, though. And same with the teams that same with the teams that have one in like week twelve or something like that. Yep. All right. Uh, so this is part two of wide receiver rankings. Any quick takeaways from part one? Anything you want to change? Are you ready to move? Uh, or flip flop? Uh, Cooper Cup and Robert Woods? Or are you staying true? No, I'm, I'm comfortable with where I'm at. Uh, as a matter of fact, J Jason's been the one shockingly doing the flip flopping before we started recording, moving Whoa. his receivers all over the place. Whoa. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, what one takeaway that I did have, and I wanted to kind of expand on the targets conversation I started last episode with was, Hey, you know, I think it was 22 out of the 24 wide receivers. Um, uh, or if you have top 24 targets, 22 of the 24 finished as you know, wide receiver twos. So I wanted to look at how many finished uh, in the top 24 targets in 2018 and who did not repeat in 2019, ah. just as an example. So how, how many, how many wide receivers do you think 
were top 24 in targets in both 2018 and 2019. Top 24? Top 24 in targets. Oh, that, that repeated. 15. Uh, it's only actually only it's only half. Um, 12. So I so tw- 12 of the 24 repeated. I will r- quickly read off the 12 that did not repeat from one year to the next. And it, it, it'll make quite a bit of sense as I read these. One is Antonio Brown. Well. <laughs> yeah. Juju Smith-Schuster. Well. Adam Thielen, who was, who was injured and we're... Yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about him a little so bit. So injuries in a uh, Stephon, case. Go on. Yep. Uh, Stefan Diggs. He did not repeat last year? He did not. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Tyreek Hill was injured. Injured. T.Y. T. Y. Hilton was injured. Yep. Brandon Cooks. Uh, I believe he missed some time. Yeah, I don't know. He he wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't. He's been mediocre last year. Yep. Uh, Golden Tate. Larry Larry Fitzgerald. Corey Davis. Yikes. What's up, AJ Brown? And and Sterling Shepard. Ooh, Sterling Shepard. Love me some Sterling this year. Yep, I agree. So it, it's one of those things, and, and maybe that's a good place to look from a, hey, who can you see bouncing back? Um, you know, we, we're, we've already talked about Juju. We think he's going to bounce back and be, and be a top 12 wide receiver. We're going to talk about Thielen here in a couple minutes. Uh, Tyreek Hill, we have bouncing back and being wide receiver too. T.Y. Hilton, we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, and you and me actually both like Sterling Shepard. He's not in the top 24 but we both think he's going to have a, a pretty productive year. So that, you know, and, and I actually like Brandon Cooks too. Uh, as long as he can stay healthy, I, I think that those are kind of some bounce back targets, uh, bounce back people that will have more targets that maybe you should potentially look at grabbing a little bit earlier, or if they're still sitting out there late, then those are the people you, you might want to find is, is people that have a history of, of a high workload. Gun to your head, who has a better season? Will Fuller? Or Brandon Cooks. Oh, uh, that's tight. Uh, if I can, will you let me look at my rankings? Nope. So I think I put them. I know I put them right next to each other. So I have Brandon Cooks at twenty four. Okay. Um, and, and I have Will Fuller at thirty five. Um, okay. So I, I I do think Brandon Brandon Cooks is going to be better than Will Fuller because Will Fuller has never shown he can stay healthy. Brandon Cooks has, um, but he's got those concussions. All right. And if you had a crystal ball and you could know that Sterling Shepard was going to be healthy all season, would you rank him inside your top 24? I would. Yeah. Yep. hundred percent. He's a, he's a surefire wide receiver too. When healthy, uh, he just needs to stay healthy. Yeah, I agree. And, and with, with the Dan, Danny Jones effect and, uh, you know, just being a new offense. Now that's my, that's my boy. Danny Jones, twelve overall. All right, let's get into these ranks. Uh, we left off at wide receiver twelve, which was uh, DJ Moore, and uh, we both thought we might have him a little bit too low. But let's continue, shall we? Wide receiver thirteen, consensus, Cooper Cup. I have him at fifteen. Alex has him at ten. ESPN has him ranked as wide receiver 20. His current ADP is wide receiver 15 going at at basically 39th overall um, right at the beginning of the fourth round in 12 team leagues. Man, give me, give me all of that at the beginning of the fourth. Uh, Again, we, I, I brought this up last time. He was number four overall as the wide out last year. Seventh in receptions, eleventh in yards, eleventh in targets, and was uh, second in the NFL with ten touchdowns. I still think the offense runs through him. Them getting rid of Brandon Cooks uh, it means he's going to be on the field every single play this year. And I don't understand why he's ranked so low. Uh, I know you're a little bit more down on him than I am, uh, but you still think he's going to be good. I I just don't understand why he's ranked so low because whenever he's on the field and he's been healthy, he's been Jared Goff's uh, go-to guy. Um, 
I think he could have a very good season. I think he could definitely end up as a low end wide receiver one. I wouldn't surprise me at all. I think he'll have wide receiver one weeks. Um, he is one of uh, Mr. Goff's favorite uh, uh, red zone targets. Um, as you said, he was 11th in targets last year. He was eighth in target, or excuse me, 13th in targets per game at 8.4. Um, he ha- uh, scored a touchdown every nine and a half receptions. Uh, just to give you an idea of what that actually means is uh, top 12 receivers in uh, rank averaged a touchdown every 12 and a half receptions. Cooper Cup did it in one touchdown every nine and a half catches. So he was very efficient with his receptions. The Rams last season were third in pass attempts at 630. Cooper Cup commanded a 21% target share, which was 17th highest in the league. You say goodbye to Brandon Cooks, which frees up 72 more targets. Just over five targets a game. I mean, those, I think they're not going to go to one guy. They're going to get spread around, but I could certainly see a slight uptick in that target share. The only thing is I know that they're going to be running more 12 personnel. We talked about it in the first wide receiver ranking show. Would not be surprised if you saw the tight ends get involved more over the course of the year than just Tyler Higby's last five, six games last season. So absolutely could be a wide receiver one. Yeah, I agree. And um, that's that's where I personally have him. I know you're a little bit lower than that, but he's proven that he can be that wide receiver one. And I don't I have no idea why ESPN has him as low as they do. I, I think it's totally unjustifiable. And if you can be getting him uh in the fourth round, that is a jackpot uh he's, from my perspective pick. He's the fourth overall wide receiver from last year, and ESPN has him ranked at twenty. So hey. Yeah. There you go. There's 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 no reason for that. Um moving on to consensus number 14, Allen Robinson. I have him at 12 overall. Alex has him at 14. ESPN has him ranked as uh wide receiver 12 as well. His ADP right now is going as wide receiver 11, uh pick uh, about 33, so mid end of the third round. Which is a fine spot for him, actually. The, the biggest downside, like I think Allen Robinson is without a doubt a top 10 talent uh, wide receiver in the NFL. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, he, he, he tore his ACL a couple of years ago and, you know, it, it might have taken him a year or two to get back, but he was fully back last year. The biggest question mark is what are they going to do at quarterback? And can you trust Nick Foles or Mitch Trubisky getting him the ball? Now, with Mitch Trubisky, you know, there, there's not... So, let me, let me start over. There's not a ton of target... Or there's not a ton of competition for targets there. Then bringing in Jimmy Graham, uh, you know, Anthony Miller doesn't really do it for me. Cole rookie Komet. tight end. Whatever. It, it, he's not going to take away targets from Allen Robinson, who was... Well, he was third in targets in the NFL last year. Six in receptions, 13th in yards, and had seven touchdowns. The thing in, in that specific offense, though, is that Mitch Trubisky was primarily a one-read quarterback. And so his first read was all was a lot of times Allen Robinson. He just and if Allen Robinson anyway. was open, he was throwing him the ball. Yeah. So does that does that change under Nick Foles? The answer is maybe, maybe not. I, Allen Robinson's still gonna be the first read on, on a whole lot of plays. Now, will he duplicate being third in targets? Probably not. That's a lot. But I, I do think that where we have him is reasonable. And I, I know you're a little bit higher on him than I am, but the, the quarterbacks just kind of freak me out. If I could pick out one person in all of these wide receiver two rankings uh, to, to end up this season as a wide receiver one, it, to me, it's Allen Robinson. Um, the, he was a wide receiver one last year, finishing at wide receiver 11. Granted, it's on the low side. I get that. The questions about can Mitch Trubisky get him the ball? Mitch Trubisky got him the ball last season. Obviously, he finishes wide receiver 11. They have seven new offensive linemen uh, trying to bolster that line, you know, combination of drafted and free agents. Um, and then you talk about signing Nick Foles. 
I wouldn't be. I mean, I think he very well could be a better quarterback than Trubisky. I mean, the guy has a Super Bowl ring and he was amazing during that playoff run. So if that's what you're getting, I'm not really I'm not down on him. Um, He was, as you said, third in targets. The only receivers ahead of him in targets last year were Michael Thomas and Julio. Uh, fourth in targets per game. The only one sneaking ahead of him in that was Devontae Adams. In addition to the previous two I just mentioned, um, uh, the Bears. This is the one. The one downside is that the Bears were 14th in pass attempts at 580 on the season last year. The Falcons. They were, just never had the ball. Well, like they, they yeah. their, their passing percentage was high. They didn't run the ball that much. They just didn't run that many they plays didn't have because, an because they're off. Correct. They they could not get first downs, right. and their defense was on the field a ton. And so, when that's the case, you're just you're just going to have less opportunity for the offensive players to perform. Bears were 14th in pass attempts at 580. Can you guess the team that was in first through the most pass attempts last season? Um, it wasn't the Chiefs, was it? No, it was the Falcons. Okay. They threw 684 pass attempts. So more than a hundred oh more, more than a hundred more passes than the Bears threw. Um, however, so if you to me, you can have a little bit, you can have a lower target share if you're throwing more passes. If you have a lower, if you're throwing less passes, then as a receiver, he needs to command a higher target share to try and end up sort of at the same place. Um, Ellen Robinson was able to do that. He commanded the third highest target share in the league at 26 and a half percent last season. The only two, only two wide receivers commanded a higher target share than Allen Robinson last season. And those are, well, one's obviously Michael Thomas. And then the second one was Deandre. So you're talking top five in targets, top five in targets per game. And top three in target share is if that offense is any better at converting first downs and moving the ball and maybe getting into the red zone where Allen Robinson could get a touchdown. Like I said, the average for uh, wide receiver one last season was 12 and a half catches per touchdown. Allen Robinson did it at 14 catches a touchdown. So a little bit below the average there, but I mean, kind of right on it. So. They just need to move the freaking ball more is really what it comes down to. And hopefully Nick Foles and those draft picks will help them do it. Yeah. And as a Bears fan, I am okay with being a little bit down on Allen Robinson and I hope he is good. Yes. All right. Moving on. Consensus 15. Adam Thielen. I have him at 14th overall. Alex has him at 15. ESPN has him all the way up at wide receiver eight. His average draft position is wide receiver 13 going at, going at uh, 33 and a half right now, which is the end of the third round. I'm hooked on a Thielen. Do, 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 do. Three for three. Getting him this low would be stealing. Do, 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 do. You think drafting him um, this low would be stealing? Maybe. I... I don't know. I, I think he's definitely a solid wide receiver two, which is where we have him ranked. Him him being a, a ranked as a wide receiver one, I think is a little aggressive. So, you know, last year coming off of, coming off of an injury where he was not really healthy, uh, he was number sixty two ranked wide receiver, thirtieth uh, in reception, seventy sixth in yards, eighty second in targets. Something doesn't seem right there. I'll double check that and, and make sure that that's that actually is the case. Forty eight total targets last season. Oh, God, he, so low. He played in 10 games. Uh, yeah, but I have 30th in receptions. That does not sound correct. But either way, he, he just did not. He was not a. It, I, just, I can't justify having to be a wide receiver one. So he's hurt. It was the first time in his career that he's been injured. Um, he, he missed six games um, and he played all 16 games his first five seasons in the, in the league. Uh, in 2018, he was a seventh ranked wide receiver. Uh, he had 113 catches, almost 1400 yards, nine TDs. Um, so 
if he were to duplicate that, he'd be wide receiver two last year. Right. I, but he, he's just, I don't know. He didn't have over eight targets in a game last year. He averaged only five targets a game when he played, um, which limits the upside. So I, I don't know how you can become a wide receiver one if you're not getting the ball thrown to you. Um, overall, we're probably a little bit low on Thielen, uh, only because he doesn't have a lot of competition for targets with Diggs gone. Um, but they're a run first offense. So that probably lowers him a little bit. So a wide receiver two makes sense. Uh, wide receiver one is, is crazy. And I, I really do hope that, uh, again, to your point, when people take Aaron Jones in the first round, um, I want to be playing the guy that take, that's taking Adam Thielen um, as a wide receiver one. Yeah. Oh, heck freaking. Yeah. Um, I'll back you up here a little bit. I think, I think wide receiver two might be his ceiling. Like I, I would almost be shocked if Thielen was a wide receiver one again. Um, that team transitioned from that pass heavy offense to what it is now because they thought they, well, they weren't winning enough games. And so he only commanded um, 48 total targets, which was 82nd <laughs> uh, last season. Uh, now, one thing that could help him is that, as you said, Stefan Diggs is gone. Stefan Diggs last season had 94 targets and commanded 20% of the team's total targets. Uh, Adam Thielen commanded just over 10% of the team's total targets last year. Granted, he did miss six games. So you figure in health plus losing Stefan Diggs. Hopefully he gets to that 20 to 25% target share. Um, however, the Vikings did draft Justin Jefferson out of LSU in the first round. This guy's stats are insane. He led the Tigers and tied for the FBS lead in receptions last season with 111. He had more than 1,500 yards, uh, almost 14 yards per catch. He had 18 touchdowns, which is second in the FBS to his teammate, <laughs> Jamar Chase. And he did that all in 15 starts. So there's your Stefan Diggs replacement on the other side. So it'll be interesting to see kind of as a sleeper where he or how much, you know, target share he commands. But I'll tell you what the main issue is. Where do you think the Vikings ranked in pass attempts last season out of 32 teams? 29th. 30th. 466. That is 220 less passes than the Falcons makes it hard. I feel like what I feel like Michael Thomas only had almost had that many targets last year by himself. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're only throwing the ball 450 times, I mean, like you have, you would have to command such a huge target share of those targets to compete with the guys that we're talking about right now. Like just the, the volume isn't there because they just turn it around and they give it to Dalvin or they give it to Madison. If Dalvin's hurt, like it's just going to make it so hard for these guys to, uh, to be wide receiver ones. I don't really see that offense changing a whole lot after the success that they did have last season. Yeah, I, I misspoke, or I actually wrote down, miswrote down his uh, 30th receptions. He actually only had 30 receptions. He was not 30th in receptions. He was actually 80th in receptions uh, among wide receivers. I I, yeah. I think I agree with you. Um, th there's no way that he ends up on any of my teams uh, in that offense. I know Kirk Cousins has got to throw the ball to somebody, but just somehow the numbers don't really add up for him to be a productive wide receiver one this year in, in my mind, unless their offense were to change substantially. Right. I mean, they did lose the to the, to the Browns. So, I mean, it will be a slightly different offense, but I hands down, I think it still remains a run first offense. So I don't really see those pass attempts going up. I think that the uh, ESPN ranking of eighth overall is just a huge overreaction to Stefan Diggs leaving. Yeah. Um, no, no, thank you at that value. So moving on, um, wide receiver 16 consensus, Portland Sutton 
I have him as wide receiver 17 overall. Alex has him at 16. ESPN actually has him at 16. His current ADP is wide receiver 18 going at 46th overall, which is the end of the fourth. And that is a potentially wonderful pick at the end of the fourth, beginning of the fifth. Uh, last year was the 19th overall wide receiver, 20th in reception, 17th in yards, 14th in targets, uh, six touchdowns was tied for 20th. Some of that was with Joe Flacco throwing the ball to him. And so we, like we just talked about Adam Thielen, who maxed out at eight targets last year. Um, Sutton had six games under eight targets. So we're like, we, we do still have Thielen ranked above Sutton. And I, I think that maybe we're both kind of rethinking that a little bit after talking through this. But when, when Thielen's maxing out at eight, Sutton's basically always getting more than eight. So he was, he was averaging eight targets per game last year. So similar to DJ Moore that we talked about last episode, he is entering his third year in the league. Um, and that's generally when wide receivers take that big step forward. Um, and so if, if you can get him here, uh, I think it's great value because he seems like he's a lock for a wide receiver too. Um, and so he's got the wide receiver one upside for me. Uh, and, and that's exactly who you want to be taking in the, in the fourth or even fifth round if he's there. I, I would be shocked if he is, honestly. Yeah. Because um, I, I, I think he, he feels like he's a third-round pick to me. Um, and if even, a, even in the third round, I feel like that's the type of player that your high floor, super high ceiling, um, and if he explodes, you're, you're sitting in really good shape. And I think he has the ability to be one of those guys that, that does take a substantial step forward this year. So I actually, I think I disagree with you. I think he's at a ceiling already. Really? In terms oh, of, man. in terms of fantasy production, I think he's at his ceiling and I'll tell you, I got, wow. I have two reasons why the Broncos. And, and just for the record, guys, the, the people that are listening or watching, this is where Jason's really good. And I'm really excited that. I'm kind of able to pick his brain on things because he always like, and I say this in all sincerity that he is the type of person that looks at things from different angles and will talk me out of people before I end up making giant mistakes on draft days. And so potentially this is an opportunity for him to explain, you know, he, he's really, really good at this. So uh, I'm, I'm really interested to hear what he has to say. So, Top, he was uh, top 15 in targets last season, finishes wide receiver 19. He averaged about eight targets a game. Um, the reasons why I think that he's maxed out already. It won't ha he, he I don't think he can go any higher than this unless there's a scheme change. The Broncos were 27th in pass attempts. They threw the ball 504 times. That's only 40 more times than the Vikings that we just talked about. Yeah, that's because Joe Flacco was their quarterback. Well, Drew Locke still. Drew Locke was there for a, a significant portion of the season, I feel like. And, the, the, and rookie. Well, you also add Melvin Gordon, which I think True. shows a commitment to the run game. And then on top of that, he's already commanding that elite level target share. So his target share can't really go up. He's commanding 24.5% target share right now of all the passes thrown in that offense. So unless you're throwing more passes, I don't really think that there's, or you're converting longer plays for scores. I mean, he was right in the, uh, the top 12 average. Uh, he, he scored a touchdown every 12 catches last season. And again, the wide receiver one uh, value was 12 and a half receptions per touchdown. Top 24 was 14 catches per touchdown. So he's right in there for, at 12 catches um per td so he would just have to have an above average conversion rate and be highly efficient with his catches to put up more points or the broncos have to throw more because i don't really see him getting any more targets than he already is especially with the guys that they added in the draft this year so it's hard it's i think he's consistent and i think he's gonna be great 
week in and week out. But again, unless they're throwing the ball more, I don't know how he goes up. So do the Broncos not have a top, uh, one of the top uh, position player uh, repertoires in football or, or do they? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because I know we've been bantering back and forth on this for several weeks now. Yeah. Skill wise, I feel like they are easily skill wise in the top 10 in the league. Fantasy output wise, they are not because they are 27th in pass attempts. But I'm arguing skill wise at the position, they have an v- extremely talented group. They just didn't throw the ball enough last year at 27th uh, in pass attempts as a team. So. Yeah, I mean, Drew, Drew Locke only played five games last year. Um, he's thrown the ball 31 times a game in, in those uh, in those games. Hopefully that so continues. It, it, yeah, it, you know, a, a nice little uptick to that would be great. And, and they were really coming on at the end of the last or at the end of last year once he kind of took over. I, I think Sutton has has a really high floor. Personally, yes, and, and but I, I think he has a lower I, I ceiling like because of the low pass attempts. Yeah, but like you look at AJ Brown last year, we're going to talk about in a little bit, and, and you know they weren't throwing that much, and he was super efficient too. Yeah, and, and I have that in here too, so we'll get to AJ. But yeah, honestly, if they're throwing the ball thirty points a game, take what I said, throw it out the window. I I mean. They have two preseason games to gear up. Maybe it'll be interesting to watch how or, you know, what the play calling style is. Um, right. but how, how many times did you say that um, that they were through the ball last year? I have the Broncos at 27th and pass attempts at 504 total. OK, so right. So when Drew Locke took over, he was throwing 31 times a game. Um, times 16, that's 496 pass attempts extrapolated over 16, uh, week season. So that, you know, he was actually just below their average. So they were actually throwing more Flacco, um, than they were true lock. And I want to say that they threw the ball a ton against the bears in like week two. Interesting. Um, well, maybe it's because like the Falcons were down in most of their games, you know, they have those Matt Ryan throwing the ball 40 to 45 times a game. You know, uh, moving on consensus 17 DJ Chark. Uh, I have him ranked at wide receiver 16. Alex has him at wide receiver 18. ESPN has him at wide receiver 25. His current ADP is wide receiver 24 going at 57th overall, which is the end of the fifth round. Like that there. Uh, he, was, he was 16th overall wide receiver last year, 19th in catches, 24th in yards, 19th in targets, eight touchdowns. Uh, Gardner Minshew uh, loved throwing to DJ Chark last year. Um, although it's kind of seemed like he was the king of garbage time where he, he wasn't really doing that much until the Jags were out of a game. Um, he also started with five TDs his first five weeks and then only had three the rest of the season. Well, so it's almost like team. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like teams were like, all right. So we, as long as we stop Chark here, um, we're going to destroy the Jags. The Jags got destroyed a whole lot. Um, a, another guy who's entering his third year, um, he, he had 12 end, end zone targets, uh, which was the fifth most in football last year. So mm. um, and she was was definitely trying to find him. Um, so from a touchdown perspective, he had eight that's tied for seventh. Um, he had the, you know, fifth most targets in the end zone. That's good as long as he can keep that up. Um, but theoretically, more is going to be going to Leonard Fournette. My guy, uh, different topic, I know. Uh, so it's it's basically one of those things where if you think the Jaguars are going to suck this year, then you really want DJ Chark to be on your team because if they're getting blown out, they're going to throw more. Uh, and I, I think he he's absolutely going to be a wide receiver too. He was last year, uh, and plus you can sing uh, a song every time he scores a touchdown, and I'm not going to do that. Do 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 do. <laughs> do, 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 do you want me to just hum it under oh, you while you're while you're giving analysis I love here? That. Yes, actually. 
Hopefully it's not too distracting. He was wide receiver 16 in 2019. Um, just under eight targets a game, which was 19. He was extremely efficient with his targets, uh, turning uh, one catch every nine point. Well, just about one every nine catches was a touchdown. Excuse me. Every for every nine catches he scored. Alex, you're throwing me off a, a smidge. However, the Jaguar were 12th in pass attempts, 589 on the season. It's kind of middle in the pack. Or, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, above average, 12th in pass attempts because, again, fall behind, have those positive game scripts. So, I also feel like yep. Minshew liked him more than Foles did. Um, so I agree. I'm interested and a little excited for a full season of Minshew Mania at QB to see how him and Shark gel especially in Chark's second season. And if I can get Chark in the end of the fifth round, that makes me feel more comfortable going like running back, running back to start it because I think he's a surefire wide receiver too, at least. And I can get him in the fifth. Um, he commanded a 20% target share. So he, he got uh, 20% of all the targets thrown by uh, the Jags last season. That 20% target share was 23rd overall. Uh, amongst wide receivers last season. So I'm actually surprised that wasn't higher. And the only reason has to be because Fournette had all the, all the targets um, and he's a rookie. out of the running back spot. Right. You know, at second, at sophomore leap, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes up, you know, any, hopefully somewhere around 5%. That'd be nice. Um, right. That's how he becomes a, from a wide receiver two to a wide receiver one. Um, Anything else you want to add on Mr. Chark? No, and uh, I mean, DJ Chark's the biggest reason why I think Gardner Minshew is going to be a potential QB1 this year is, is because they seem like they had a good rapport last year. I can see both of them taking another step forward this year in that offense um, with uh, you know them replacing coordinators and just kind of a shakeup. And their defense just... You know, they've fallen off so much from a couple years ago when they had one of the best. Year. Yeah, it's just incredible how much that defense is, has really fallen off. So, like, my wife has family in Jacksonville when I was down there, like, week three or four or whatever, and, and Minshew had taken over, and I'm seeing, like, Gardner Minshew merch from Barstool, and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, these guys really, these guys really the love their mustache, their must man. Yeah, it's yeah. So, and I mean, Minshew has always kind of been a gunslinger. And if they're going to continue to throw the ball like they did last year, um, and you know, if let's just say some of those targets come off of a running back and he pushes the ball downfield a little bit more, then DJ Chark is is a sure surefire wide receiver too. Absolutely. Moving on, consensus eighteen DK Metcalf. I have him at wide receiver 18. Alex has him as wide receiver 20. ESPN has him all the way down at wide receiver 27. His average draft position is currently wide receiver 22 going at 54 and a half or the middle of the fifth round. This, um, I this is like more of a gut call than anything. Like his numbers last year don't really support him being this high, especially over Tyler Lockett. If if you're looking at the two of them, just from a straight up number standpoint, Lockett outperformed him a lot. Yeah. Uh, or over overall for the year, but there's a couple things that are going against that. So one, DK Metcalf was a rookie last year. Uh, he was the 32nd overall wide receiver his rookie year, which is which is pretty solid uh, for a rookie. Uh, 36th in receptions, 28th in yards, 30th in targets, and he had seven touchdowns. Uh, DK Metcalf led the league with 19 end zone targets, which is three more than any other wide receiver in football last year. Mm -hmm. And he was he was tied for 13th again with seven touchdowns. So if he converts a couple more of those, you're looking at an upper echelon uh, from, from a touchdown machine. This is what I'm talking which, about which in is, terms of efficiency, because when I said that wide receiver ones averaged a touchdown every 12 catches, he converted uh, a touchdown 
every just over eight catches was a touchdown. Like that's fantastic. The man was a the red zone option for this offense. Yep. And so like in our rankings, I have Metcalf and Lockett right next to each other. You have Lockett considerably lower. Um, But to me, you know, again, this is more of a feel thing because when you watch them, you felt like Russ, when he needed a play to be made, he was going to DK Metcalf. Oh yeah. And, and he was a rookie. Yeah. So, you have another year and coming out of the draft, this dude is, you know, he's one of those, uh, you know, kind of combine beasts where people are like, is he really good? But he's got great hands. Um, he's, he's a great possession receiver. He has the explosiveness to get down fields and, and burn them. Lockett had 10 more targets than him last year, but I think those, I think those targets flip flop this year and Russ is going to look for him more. Um, and so I, I think, Metcalf should be ranked here. I think ESPN is a little low on him. Uh, and again, another guy where if he's sitting there around five, please. He is, I think, if I, if I had to pick one guy to go get a jump ball, like for a first down at the end of the game when it mattered most, I think I would probably pick DK Metcalf. Like, the guy is jive-freaking-gantic and Yep. Oh my God. Can he high point a ball? Um, he commanded uh, just over 19% target share last season, which was 28th uh, in the league. Um, say goodbye, Josh Gordon, and let's free up those 85 targets and let's see where they go. Uh, that's 9% of the target share is now left the building. So maybe. Second year receiver kind of took over towards the end of the season. I think he could have an absolute breakout year. Uh, I wish the Seahawks threw the ball more. Um, they were 23rd in but passing they might. I mean, they, they might throw the ball more with, with Chris Carson coming off the ACL and, and Penny not, not being up to speed at the beginning of the year. And are you really going to want to turn around and give the ball to anybody else there? Carlos Hyde? Eh, yeah. No thanks. So. You know, it's possible they do air it out a little bit more at the beginning of the season, which would be good to see. Yeah, well, it would be great for DK. I mean, that uh, just over Plus eight, a, a very a very underrated Mario Kart character. <laughs> just <laughs> just over eight receptions per touchdown. I mean, the guy was so efficient with his freaking catches last season. Such a high conversion rate, and. Uh, I I really like him. I think I'm going to end up with him on a, on a lot of teams this season, um, especially if I can get. Yeah, him in the I, I, I think you can justify taking him in the fourth. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it, there's like if if you're looking around at, at running backs and you know we, we talked about it last time or, or a couple episodes ago, but if if you can, you know, if you're looking at taking like Mostert or DK Metcalf, it's one of those things where hopefully if you take one of them, the other one's still going to be there in the next round. Yeah. So it's it's really important to be looking at the ADPs of these guys to figure out, hey, can I can I let or you know which one has a better chance of getting back to me on the next go round to no, try to ADPs. grab these guys that yeah that that were a little bit higher on. Also, like super beneficial if you know your league mates really well because like. Some yep. guys just draft a couple wide receivers at the beginning and then draft like eight running backs <laughs> the rest of the draft. <laughs> oh, what's up, Alex? <laughs> Hello there. No, I, 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 and this also plays into it too, but it's really important to be knowing, especially when you're towards the end, the beginning or end of a round, you know, what have the people around you, you know, what do their rosters look like? Yes. Because if they're if they're already running back heavy, then you're going to want to take DK Metcalf because they're more likely to leave Mostert alone, so you get him on the comeback. So the the people that are not paying attention to who's been drafted around them by the people, especially the last like you know if if you're like the fourth pick or the ninth pick, and you can keep track of one, two, three, and ten, eleven, twelve, and kind of know who's potentially coming back to you in six picks, that's super important. To, to try to convert on on where, you know, take the people that they're going to want to pick 
and then they're going to have to reach for somebody to try to fill out a roster, and you're going to get the gold on the pack side of it, too. Yep. All right. Moving on. Consensus, wide receiver 19, T.Y. Hilton. I have him as wide receiver 24. Alex is much higher. Well, maybe not much, but certainly higher at wide receiver 19. ESPN has him at wide receiver 23. His current ADP is going as wide receiver 23 at 54 and a half overall. Also in the middle of, of the fifth. So T.Y. last year, 58th overall wide receiver, 55th in reception, 66th in yards, 63rd in targets, uh, five touchdowns. I, I've i always loved T.Y. Hilton. Uh, I, I don't know why I've always loved T.Y. Hilton, and maybe it was because of his Andrew Luck days and T.Y. is just streaking down the field all the time. Uh, I, I think T.Y. is going to be better as long as he can stay healthy. Uh Phil Rivers is a much better quarterback as far as supporting fantasy wide receivers than Jacoby Brissett goes. Yeah, uh, that's saying a, that's that's about as mildly as you could put that comment. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he is a better quarterback or not at this point in his career, but he's proven over and over again that he can support multiple a, a wide, wide receiver receivers. one. Yeah, so um, he was 13th in scoring. Um, before he got hurt last year. And so he he's always shown that he can be, you know, that's very solid wide receiver two, you know, fringe one. Well, maybe uh, we and give Phillip Rivers had enough credit then if he was wide receiver 13. Yeah, but their entire team got hurt. Yeah. They, like they, they just like fell apart. And so Rivers has shown wide receiver one. So you got Keenan Allen. Uh, historically, right, where where he supported him. But you, if you go back a little bit further, you have Mal- Malcolm Floyd, uh, who, was, who was really good for, for a couple of years. You have the next great NFL wide receiver, Vincent Jackson. <laughs> for- <laughs> uh, Alex has been calling Vincent Jackson the next great NFL wide receiver for close to like 12 years. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think it, I think it started in, in 2007. Oh, uh, it's I think I'm another legal requirement. The next great NFL wide receiver, Vincent Jackson, uh, <laughs> Keenan Allen's always <laughs> always been pretty good, uh, and, and even Mike Williams was, was serviceable. And so I I think that Ty should be a, a solid two, provided he can stay healthy. If the health isn't there, then it won't be there. But if he stays healthy, which he doesn't seem like he's been able to do the last couple of years, uh, then obviously he, he should not be taken here. So he's one of the guys where it's probably a little bit more risky to be having him rank this high just because of injury history. Yeah. That's the thing though, is like, if the guy stays healthy, this is low. Um, Correct. <laughs> I, I'm interested to see what his target share is with rivers, um, man in the ship um, Colts. However, we're 25th in pass attempts last season, so not a whole lot of passes coming out of Indy last year. Um, maybe it's because of the quarterback situation they had. Uh, obviously, they did add another running back in Taylor this offseason, so I'm interested to see what the play calling is and then how much Rivers likes to favor your boy, T.Y., who, uh, yeah, he was he was very good in his limited action. I was so devastated last year because I specifically remember being at a draft and taking T.Y. Hilton in like the fourth round. And I was just like, oh, my God, I got a steal on this. Uh, And then literally 10 minutes later, Andrew Luck announced he was retiring and I was (laughs) devastated. Oh, well, shame on you. And I took Damian. Yeah, and I took Damian Williams the round before that. So that team sucked. That's how you lose at fantasy. Um, yep, it's true. Don't do that. Consensus wide receiver 20, AJ Brown. I have him as wide receiver 27. Alex has him as wide receiver 17. ESPN has him ranked as wide receiver 19, currently going as wide receiver 16, 44 and a half overall in the middle of the fourth, middle end of four. Last year, A.G. Brown was the 15th best wide receiver, 43rd in receptions, 
21st in, in yards, 45th in targets, oh. eight touchdowns. Uh, so I, we, we talked about DK Metcalf already. Um, AJ Brown was better than him last year from a, a fantasy perspective. Um, and so overall, I have AJ Brown ranked ahead of DK Metcalf because at the end of last year, um, he had the second most fantasy points from as a wide receiver after their bye week, which is week 11. So, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, he was the number two wide receiver in football or in fantasy football, I should say. And, but he was being super efficient in order to do it. I, I am personally actually a little bit surprised that I'm higher on AJ Brown than, than you are. I, I know you were higher on him. Um, I was, and then again, I looked at the numbers. I, yeah, the, the numbers don't support what he did last year. But if you're high on Ryan Tannehill, then I think you have to be high on AJ Brown. There, there's, it doesn't really seem like there's a lot of competition for targets, but Corey Davis a couple years ago did have over 100 targets. Uh, and Adam Humphreys is there, but it, it just depends on if they're going to if they're gonna pound the ball with Derrick Henry all year, then that's one thing. But I don't think they can be giving him all those carries at the beginning of the year and keep him healthy throughout the year. So at the beginning of the year, I think you're going to see them open it up a little bit more, try to have Ryan Tannehill do more work, which will have A.J. Brown be better. And then maybe as you get towards the end of the year, as it gets to be nut crunch. Yeah, right. You're you're going to turn around and and give it to to Derrick Henry instead. So maybe not the best fantasy playoff uh, guy, but I, I think he should still be a wide receiver too. I, yeah, I think the only way, but the, the, the targets is the scary thing. I think that this is probably his ceiling as wide receiver, you know, right in this wide receiver two area. Um, Not because was, of talent though, because of scheme. Yes. Oh, uh, 100,000% yes. And target share. Yeah. And I want to touch on both of those things. So scheme. Guess where the the Titans ranked in pass attempts last season? 32nd. 31st. They threw the ball 448 times or 240 times less than the Falcons. <laughs> And which is wow. 15 less passes per game. <laughs> wow. Per game. <laughs> per game. Wow. So that's unbelievable. If you're not, that's so many. That's why he, that, that's wow. why he finished in the late forties and targets. Um, you know how you finish as a, a top 15 wide receiver though? You you convert one uh one reception uh, every six and a half into a touchdown. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Talk about efficiency. One out of every six wow. and a half catches was a TD, ladies and gents. He did not have elite target share either. Um, he was a rookie, so why would you expect him to? There were three players on his team. All three receivers uh, commanded uh, double digit target shares. Uh, AJ Brown at 18.75%, uh, Corey Davis at 15.5%, and Humphreys at just over 10% target share. So that we need to cut out Corey Davis a little bit and Humphreys, and those targets need to go to AJ Brown if you're only going to be throwing 450 tar- or passes on the year. Um, that 18 and a half percent target share was 31st amongst wide receivers. The only way he returns wide receiver to value in this scheme is if he keeps scoring on huge plays. That is the only way, which means in games that he doesn't, it won't be pretty. So yeah, the target share you, has to but- go way up. Or the pass attempts have to go up. And I can tell you, I don't think those pass attempts go up very much if they go up at all. So they turn around yeah, and give the, the ball to Derrick Henry. Right. That's that's the DNA of their team. But I, I will also say with Marcus Mariota, 
the first the first six seven weeks of the year like these these were the targets well well Marcus Mariota was was the quarterback four five five three two four so it's like at at the end of the year when Tannehill was there and and kind of percolating a little bit uh, and I'm gonna kind of cherry pick some targets here seven seven thirteen eight uh, he did only have two targets against New Orleans who. Um, was focused on him, but he did break off a 50 yard touchdown run that hey, week. There you go. So nice and efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Get right. Exactly. They they'll figure out a way, hopefully to get him the ball more because the dude was, he's a monster. He's actually very similar to DK Metcalf. Um, but I think we both agree that, um, you know, I, I think AJ Brown's going to be better than Metcalf this year, just because I, I think that they're going to figure out a way to get him the ball more and, He's certainly that's, more that's electric. He, he, was, he was so good at the end of last year, too, he, even though yeah. he wasn't getting the ball as much. He's so electric as a receiver. Like, he is so freaking good. It's just, I just, they need to get him the ball more uh, to be a wide receiver one. So I think wide receiver two is probably low end wide receiver two, might maybe is the value, so long as he keeps up that high conversion rate. Um, yep. Consensus 21, Julian Edelman. We, you, you and I both have him ranked at wide receiver 22. ESPN has him all the way down as barely a flex wide receiver at 36 at the position. He's currently going as wide receiver 33, going at uh, just about 80th overall. You can get him in the middle of the sixth round, ladies and gentlemen. That's so disrespectful to potential NFL Hall of Famer Julian Edelman. He's so last year, 10th overall wide receiver in fantasy, fourth in reception, 16th in yards, fourth in targets, only had six touchdowns. Uh, I do know that he lost Tom Brady. Um, does getting Cam Newton as his quarterback potentially improve his value? Maybe. I, hard to know. We won't really know until the season starts. But we do know that Julian Edelman is the best receiver on the Patriots, and Bill Belichick figures out a way to get the ball to his best players, or it's really Josh McDaniels. Um, per ESPN, Julian Edelman has finished no worse than 17th in fantasy points per game each of the last six years. So take that, ESPN. If, so as long as he stays healthy. And he's never been worse than 17th in points per game. And where does ESPN have him at? 31? No, 36. Barely even okay. flex eligible. That's ridiculous, at least in my opinion. So losing Brady is a concern. We don't know what that offense is going to look like with Cam. Um, but he's a beast. Even when he's hurt, he plays through like broken shoulders, like oh, yeah. get a torn labrum, I think. And, oh, yeah. Like he, he's had. Uh, numerous concussions that have not been documented because uh, he just gets up and pretends like he didn't just black out. Uh, <laughs> but the, the dude is just a beast. Uh, biggest concern is he, he does drop a lot of passes uh, and we don't know what that offense is going to look like, but uh, I still like Julian Edelman to be on my team. Yeah, me too. Even with the drop passes, Giselle. Um, New England, fifth in pass attempts last season at 620. They chucked that freaking ball all over the field. And who did they throw it to? Julian Edelman. Uh, 25% target share, sixth in the league last season. The guy, the offense was the Julian Edelman show last season. I mean, finishes as a wide receiver one. I don't know how you turn around. I mean, look, I understand he was <laughs> Tom Brady's pet. You know, that's who Tom Brady threw the ball to. But like Cam Newton is not garbage. <laughs> he can get it to a guy, especially if he's running short little crossing Julian Edelman routes like. And and even if he is garbage, then they're not going to play him and Sidham's going to be their quarterback. Like, right. I do trust Bill Belichick and that offense to do what's best for that team. And so, you know, we're going to see it right away is if they do more of a ground and pound, keep the uh, keep the offense on the field as much as possible because they have a dominant defense and they're doing more ball control, 
or are they going to kind of open things up? You, you'll be able to tell very quickly. Like I'm literally saying after week one, if Julian Edelman's values here, because if he does not have a bunch of targets, you should try to trade him. And honestly, I'd trade him for Sony Michelle or James White, depending on what their offense would look like, because you're, it's either going to be one or the other. Somebody's going to perform. And so if, if they keep it the same as last year, there's no reason why Julian Edelman's not that guy. When, when I said uh, going 80th overall, that's not the middle of the sixth. That's the middle of the seventh. Talk about value. So That's crazy to me. With that, I mean, <laughs> that's like, yes, please. Every time, like, are you kidding? If that's, that's your, that's like your wide receiver four <laughs> at that point in the draft. Like, yes, yeah. I, I will throw a dart at on Julian Edelman in the seventh. Especially somebody that's been as successful as he has for as long as he has been. I know he is getting old. Theoretically, he will fall off at one point. But you also have to remember that he's also a very prideful person. And he's going to be somebody that's going to be like, yeah, Tom Brady was not the reason why I'm good. Throw me the damn ball. Yeah. And. If as as long as he gets the targets, which I think he's going to, then there's no reason why he shouldn't be at at worst a flex. <laughs> yeah, like a high end flex, you know. At worst, so lots of value for Julian there. Uh, moving on to consensus twenty two, Devonte Parker. Alex and I both have him at twenty three overall. Look at that back to back matching rankings. We're so adorable. Uh, ESPN has him at 26th at the position. His ADP is currently wide receiver 25 going at 59 overall, which is right at the turn at the end of the fifth round. Tell me, yeah, what, tell uh, me about Devante. De Devante, number seven overall wide receiver last year, 20th receptions, fourth in yards, 16th in targets, nine touchdowns, tied for third at football last year. Uh, you were formerly much higher on on Deve Devontae Parker than I was. I know, um, but before we but before we started, you're like, I don't know if I have Devontae Parker that I, high. I had um, the penalty. And, and, yeah, can you, would you like to go into that now? That's yeah. I mean, I didn't want to do it, and the guy's like the whole reason why I got the one seed in our league last year. Like, shout out Devontae. Thanks for the. Thanks for the output. Um, right. So like his season was so strange last year because he wasn't that good at the beginning of the season. He just caught fire. The well, last, I mean, like, yeah, Josh Rosen, nine, two nine or games. three out of the first four games. Josh Rosen is like, talk about a guy that's always been perpetually set up to fail first in Arizona and now in Miami. But, you know, good luck to him wherever he ends up next. But yeah, so Devante. The Dolphins were seventh in pass attempts last year. They threw the ball 615 times. As long as he keeps commanding that last season 21% target share, which was 18th in the league, like he did have a very high conversion rate too. Like the guy scored touchdowns. One out of every eight catches was a touchdown. So then that was above, that's above wide receiver one levels. So super efficient as well. It's just, Frickin', I don't know. Do you trust Tua to get him the ball? I I don't know. Has anybody seen Tua throw with his hip? I I I, uh, I don't know. So if you told me Fitzpatrick was his starting quarterback the entire season, I would have left him where I had him originally, which was uh, wide receiver sixteen. And I think that ESPN is also penalizing him for the Tua. Uh, to a potential at wide receiver 26 in their rankings, which I get. Um, but I mean, that 21% target share was so pretty. And Fitzpatrick just kept feeding him the ball. So. Yeah, his last uh, eight games last year, he had 10 or more targets in all of them, except for two of the games, mm -hmm. uh, which which give that to me. Uh, the two games were uh, that he did not get two and seven targets. Uh, so he, he did have a stinker in there uh, against the Jets, which is a little surprising. Um, but prior to those last eight games, uh, he was averaging just 5.6 targets a week. Um, we don't know who the quarterback is, to your point. 
Uh, we don't know what their offense is going to look like because I think the Dolphins are going to be a lot better this year. Uh, their defense is going to be a lot better. So are you going to see more ground and pound with Jordan Howard and Matt Breida there, uh, lowering that passing percentage that you were just talking about and, and them really trying to control the ball more, take a more low point uh, style game where you're just trying to bleed the clock out and let your defense do the work. Um, also, um, <laughs> In his first four years in the league, last year being his first, um, being his fifth, uh, this is so funny to me. Last year was his fifth year in the league. It was the first time that he was a top 50 wide receiver in fantasy football. <laughs> I had him so, a couple times too in those first five or four or five years. Yeah. And, and like people kept waiting for him to go off. And all of a sudden you saw him go off last year. What's up, Adam seventh, Gase? Seventh best. Right. That's what I was going to say. That's exactly what I was going to say is you've, you've crazy guy Adam Gase as his coach. So maybe, maybe that's part of it. Um, so if he's getting the targets, then he's going to be wide receiver too, but it comes down to, we don't know what that offense is going to look like. We don't know what two is going to do. And we don't know if, you know, Preston Williams is going to take a step forward. I, I know that's kind of weird, but he, he did have some pretty big weeks last year randomly. Yeah. Uh, so, so we'll, um, you know, Devontae Parker, I think we have him right here as a, I, I think it's a good spot. Fringe to uh, definitely a wide receiver three flex guy. Uh, oh my but God. I, if I he's my flex wide receiver. Oh, I'd be so happy. Yeah, I, I think that, I think that's reasonable. Yep. Uh, moving on. Consensus 23, Terry F1 McLaurin. I oh my. Am, I I love this man. If if I if I could just uh I'd love you Terry. I love you F1. I love you scary Terry. I'm sorry that all of your nicknames are terrible, but gosh, are you freaking <laughs> fun to watch. Um I have him ranked at wide receiver 19. Alex has him down at wide receiver 29. ESPN has him as wide receiver 21. His ADP is more affordable than that. Currently going wide receiver 27. Or 60th overall, again, right at that nice little turn um, at the end of the fifth round. Uh, last year, uh, your boy was a rook. Finished 27th overall uh, wide receiver, 36th in receptions, 27th in yards, 35th in targets. It's seven touchdowns. Um, yeah, to your point, I, I have McLaurin at, at 29. I don't really trust him. I don't trust that offense. I uh, don't don't trust their quarterback in in Haskins. Um, no, he had a couple big he had a couple big weeks. Uh, from week seven to thirteen, he averaged five point five points a week, and that's that's not a wide receiver too. Um, I, I do think that Washington's going to be playing from behind, um, and they're going to have to score points against the Cowboys, Giants, and Eagles. Um, and somebody's going to have to score. So theoretically it's McLaurin, but I just don't trust him. I believe he went over 20 points in both games against the Eagles last season. So like, okay. Um, no, no, I'm saying, I'm saying when they play their teams in their division, th those are three pretty high powered offenses yeah. based on what we're projecting. And so they're going to have to throw. He's their number one guy. That, that's oh, yeah. all I'm saying. No, I, I'm saying like, okay, like I agree with you. Like, yes, please. Like, give, uh, me, give me some of that. I want to start him that week. Like, um, I like Terry McLaurin and I am biased because he was my little week one waiver wire diamond in the rough last season and was so freaking good with an asterisk while Case Keenum was quarterback. There you go. Because because after the fourth single digit game in a row with Dwayne Haskins, I I I I did what I hated to do most, and and I I dropped him. <laughs> I did drop I did I did drop Terry McLaurin last season. So right. So hold on. You're start, starting in week seven. Was it the one point six, the five point nine, the five point nine, the eight point four, the nine point seven, or the one point eight points that really did it in? I think it was that one point eight. After showing that little bit of promise, we started going back up, and then it was one point eight. And I just said, "Screw this." 
And I moved. And then on. he went thir- 13.7, 21, and 12 the last three weeks. Yeah, he did. Um, gosh, he his ceiling is so high. He is so good. At 20% tar- or 19.5% target share, uh, 27th in the league. Washington doesn't throw the ball enough because I don't know why they don't have an elite running back. I mean, yeah, they have guys like guys was supposed to be good, but he got hurt and we still don't know if he's going to be a lead or not. Like they still keep turning around and handing it to 32, 33 year old Adrian Peterson, um, 28th and pass. Attempts. Yep. They threw the ball 479 times. That's 200 times less than the Falcons. So, what, how did he? How did he become, uh, you know, a uh, low end wide receiver to flex wide receiver last year? He converted a uh, above average amount of receptions into touchdowns. One out of every eight point three catches, in fact. So that's wide receiver one, better than wide receiver one levels. So extremely efficient. Didn't have all the yards. Disappeared for weeks at a time when Haskin, you know, rookie quarterback like that's why i'm concerned about Devonte parker like granted i think tua is going to do laps around dwayne haskins as a freshman quarterback but like that adjustment period is so rough for the rest of the team and it can be and so i'm hoping haskins is better in his sophomore season and it doesn't he doesn't need to be a lot better <laughs> like even if he's just marginally better, I feel like Terry could have a very respectable uh, wide receiver two caliber season. So that's what I'm hoping for. We'll see if it happens. Yeah, and just real quick on Ron Rivera. I know that he's the new head coach there. And, River and he is more. He is more of a defensive coach. Um, even though I feel like for some reason he got the the like offensive coach rep well in Carolina. Um, and that was probably mostly due to Cam Newton. Um, but just like from an DJ Moore and CMC. Well, I'm saying like going back to like the Steve Smith days and, um, so like uh, from a passing offense perspective, so he was the Carolina coach starting in 2011 through 2019. And I just want to read off to you where they ranked as far as the number of pass attempts each of those years. Oh boy. So uh, in 2011, they had the 23rd most passing attempts. And from there on, this is what it is. 26, 30, 19, 27, 20, 27, 15, and second in 2019. Um, and so they primarily, ha- or historically, his offenses have been more run first. Um, and so because of that, passing attempts being a little bit lower. Um, I, I just can't just cannot trust their offense to, to get McLaurin into, um, you know, into that wide receiver two range. Yep. And last but not least wide receiver 24 consensus Odell Beckham jr. I have him at 25. Alex has him at 27. We actually both have him ranked outside but we disagree on everybody else around this area. So Odell ends up at 24 ESPN has him higher at 18. Overall, his current ADP wide receiver nine. Man, Going that is so risky. 32nd overall middle end of the third round. So from a talent perspective, that makes sense. But from like an overall numbers perspective last year, it doesn't. He was 26th overall. He had the 18th most receptions, 20, 30 yards. He did have the 12th most targets, uh, but only had four touchdowns. Um, last year, when you and me got together and did our rankings, we, we had Odell Beckham as our sixth ranked wide receiver uh, as, as the first year as a Brown. Uh, and we he wanted to believe. Yeah, uh, so kind of weird. And I I looked up what he did in 2018 with Eli and what he did in 2019 with Baker. So 2018, he had 76 catches with Eli on 124 targets. With Baker Mayfield, he had two less catches and had nine more targets, which is a little surprising. I actually thought that he would have been better with Eli. Right. Just just conceptually. Right. He had... uh, 
he had uh, 235 more yards with Eli and two more touchdowns with Eli than he did with Baker Mayfield. Man, if you look at Odell's first three years in the league, he had 1,300 receiving yards and 12 touchdowns, 1,450 receiving yards and 13 touchdowns, and 1,350 yards and 10 touchdowns. And it just hasn't been there since he got hurt in 2017. And from like a t- pure talent standpoint, yes, top 10 wide receiver. But I don't, I don't know if Baker can get him the ball. I don't know what that offense is going to look like. I personally think they're going to be running the ball a lot more than they did last year, or at least at minimum, uh, the same amount. Uh, he does have competition for targets there with Jarvis Landry. And so like I so much want to put Odell Beckham higher. But I just I can't. But I but I want to, and he's a sexy name that's sitting there, but I don't think that where you have to take him justify like I don't think he's gonna bring the bring you the value where you have to draft him to have him be on your team. So that's I, I've never had Odell Beckham Jr. on any one of my teams ever. If I'm going to draft, if I'm going to if I'm going to have either Odell or Jarvis on my team this season, it's going to be Jarvis 100 times out of 100 based on current values and ADPs. And I'm super excited to get into this with you a little bit. So Odell Beckham, Cleveland, uh, my concern with the Cleveland Browns, you hit it right on the head. Uh, last season, they were 19th in pass attempts. So middle of the road. Um, but you bring in Stefanski from the Vikings and they were what? What did we say, Adam Thielen? The Vikings were 30th in pass attempts last season. Like, the Cleveland Browns last season threw the ball approximately like 70 to 80 more times than the Vikings did. And so, what's up, Vikings offense? What's up, throwing the ball less? And how we doing, Uh, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt? so I, th- I think that these target numbers are probably going to go down for Beckham and Landry. But, I mean, Beckham wasn't even a wide receiver too last year. I had him finishing as wide receiver 26. Yes, he was, right. he was a wide receiver one in targets. He averaged just over uh, eight targets a game. But, man, no touchdowns. Not a lot of touchdowns out of that offense. Um he commanded a very healthy sh- target share he, at 24.7% out of all the targets thrown in that offense. That target share number at almost 25% is seventh highest amongst all wide receivers. So even if they throw less and he has that super high target share, he could still be very productive and serviceable. Um, I am just not going to pay a wide receiver nine price to get him, especially when you look at the other guy in the offense and I don't even, I'm not sure where Jarvis Landry is in our consensus rankings, but I know I have him ranked 21, which is higher than Odell. Uh, you have him ranked at 33, which is lower than you have Odell ranked. Yeah. I'm ES- at 26. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, ESPN has uh, Jarvis Landry at we, our consensus is 26. That's correct. Okay, so consensus 26. Odell's consensus is 24. ESPN has him at 24 uh, for, for Landry, that is. And Landry's current ADP, wide receiver 29, going at 69th overall. You can get Jarvis Landry in the middle of the sixth round. He was wide receiver 14 last season. He had 138 nice. targets, which was ninth in the league. More targets per game than Odell at 8.6. And his, he had a heart, higher target share in the same offense that Odell, Odell did at 25.5% target share, which was fourth highest amongst all wide receivers. So the only receivers higher than him in target share last season were Allen Robinson, Michael Thomas, and DeAndre Hopkins were the only three guys higher than Jarvis Landry in target percentage. And you can get him in the middle of the sixth and getting it instead of getting Odell in the middle of the third when they're basically like the same kind of guy. So 
I mean, for that value, like, see you later, Odell. I'm going to Jarvis there. That just, ah. Yeah, it's just, he he's a guy that gets taken based on potential every year, based on the first three years. And yeah. it's possible that he, that he gets there, but the numbers the last two years specifically don't get you, don't get you to that value. Now, could he perform at that level? Absolutely. But based on the numbers, he's just not, he just isn't there. No. So a lot of name recognition drafting going on there, which I mean, that's going to happen regardless. And the people that draft him, I don't think are going to be listening to a whole lot of fantasy football podcasts this off season. So what's up fantasy football sackos. Um, Hey guys. (laughs) <laughs> just, just real quick, the, the, the people that we have not talked about uh, in the top 24 that ESPN has ranked in their top 24, only kind of honorable mentions here. Uh, so they have Keenan Allen at 15, Tyler Lockett at 16, Calvin Ridley at 19, uh, and Jarvis Landry at 24 that we just mentioned. We have him at 26. Uh, the players that we have ranked inside our top 24 um, that ESPN does not, uh, TJ Chark at 25. Devontae Parker at 28, Julian Edelman at 29 or 31 or whatever list you're, we're looking at, uh, and DK Metcalf, they, they have down in the 30s. So that'll kind of give you an idea, again, of, of who we're higher on, who we're a little bit lower on. But Keenan Allen going 15th, Lockett 16th, Ridley 19th is just crazy high for what those offenses are potentially going to look like uh, going forward. But... Yeah, I mean, really, the only way he repeats is if the Falcons are, again, the number one highest passing offense in the league. Like, they have to be. But And I, and I, and I do predict that some of those touchdowns from Ridley actually go to Julio this year, which... That'd be nice for Julio. Oh, my. It would be great. But... All right, ladies and gents. The, uh, hold ahead. on. Let the record show that I did wear, according to our Twitter poll, I had to wear a man bun this episode. So I actually did have a man bun uh, on. I don't know if you can really see it or not, but uh, there's like a little little doohiggy. Hold on, hold on. Right there. We're, so, we're, we're transitioning uh, screens. Let's see this baby up close and personal. Hold on, sorry. Yeah, let's... Oh my god. Oh... I don't know if that's a man bone at the beginning of a rat tail. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally the only thing I can do. I apologize. Just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to deliver for our, for our Twitter folks. Oh, you always deliver what the people need. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for listening. Please visit the fantasyfootballsackos.com for all of our podcast content and rankings, all of our complete rankings. Um, Still working on shoring some of those up still. I think we're going to go through tight ends next. Well, I, I don't think we're going to dedicate a podcast to kickers and defenses. Here, kicker and defense <laughs> advice. Kicker and defense advice. Draft them in the last two rounds. There you go. That's the show. <laughs> um, and then we are so close to mock draft time. Uh, follow us on social media. You can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. We are at the FF Sackos on all social medias. Thank you for listening. Have a good night. Bye.